racing, country racing. Come and celebrate our beautiful regions, our towns and our people. Country Racing supports and celebrates local community groups with a day that's got it all. So get out there for a day when everyone comes together with food, fashion, live entertainment and all the up-close racing action you love. It's our racing, our way, and it's yours too, the moment you arrive. Book now at country.racing.com. What's your country racing? Introducing Craig the Call-Up King. When there's a late slot to fill at the races, he goes from having nothing on to getting on quickly. That's why he uses Sportsbet's new fast form to find a winner. Track talent, tick. Striking distance, absolutely. Oh, that's good form. Fast and easy. What's this? Another ticket? Giddy up. Make it look easy with Sportsbet. You win some, you lose more. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website. Racing.com and Hong Kong, where we witness some of the world's best go head to head. That's not a whip, that's a one. Every meeting from Sha Tin and Happy Valley. Hong Kong Racing Live on Racing.com. We are Gallic in 2007. No 10 year old has ever won the cup. We're going to come back to him. We're going to start with the horse you're tipping. Number three, acceleration. His last two runs have been outstanding. The Great Western Cup, I know it's not a traditional lead-up to the Adelaide Cup, but he carried a big weight. He sat back off a moderate tempo and went bang. Uh, last start at Launceston, over a mile and a half. He settled midfield. Again, he was able to use that change of gear. He put that race away by the 100-metre mark. Soft win in the end. Has to run out the trip and has to settle early. If he does, he's got the X factor. We'll come back to numbers one and two. John, number four, the map. Leading local chance, and I don't think SA has had a good as chance as this to win the Cup for a long time. Very good first up here over 2,000 metres where she was able to win the JRA plate. Last start in the Lord Reams again hit the line well, but I thought she probably had her chance to win that against Yellow Brick Road. Can definitely win. Jamie Carr is a plus. Her career best run is the only time Jamie Carr has ridden her. The veteran, Skirm, he actually ran in the Cup two years ago, John. He was only a $6 chance and ran eighth in the race, won by Dash Arm Sweet Jr. His lead-up form into the Adelaide Cup of 2022 was very strong. He won that uh, night cup at Mooney Valley that year and beat Dush and Sweet Junior. That horse then came out and won the Adelaide Cup. Uh, since then, he's injured a tendon and had most of that two-year period off. He's been going OK since he came back, but he'd really need to improve three or four lengths here. Grand, Grand Piero gets the services of Craig Williams for the Jason Warren stable. Slight tinkering of gear here by Jason Warren. Blinkers off, visor on. Such a consistent horse, basically never runs a bad race. Just often seems to find one or two better than him. I'm sure that he'll beat at least most of the field home. He maps to get a good run inside gate, Craig Williams. Patrick Kearney's done a terrific job with Yellow Brick Road. Seven starts for him, three wins, including his most recent two outings. The first of those seven starts was at benchmark 58 level, which he was able to win under a big weight. His most recent win for Patrick was last start in the Lord Reams. I thought he was fantastic there. They didn't go slowly in that race. He was there all the way. He wasn't going away at the finish, and I thought he was just about holding the map right on the line. I think he maps very well. He'll be in the first two or three in the run. I can't see much pressure. Port Guillaume, who came out from overseas with a good reputation. He won four of his first six starts overseas, and he came out here and ran in the Caulfield and Melbourne Cups of 2021, but just the two wins in Australia. Two wins in Australia, one of which was over the jumps at Ballarat. The only other time he's won, he was actually really impressive beating Rolls at Flemington back in June last year. If he was to one run like that, he could most definitely win or at least figure. Your only issue with all his form outside that's around five lengths shy of what he did that day. Lincoln King's a veteran galloper, a nine-year-old now. He's only been with Catherine Durden for seven runs. He was a pretty handy horse in New Zealand. He won a Wellington Cup over two miles. He's got one advantage over the rest of the field, and he's a winner at two miles. He's the only horse in the race that has winning form at the distance. He's now a nine-year-old, and uh, he's obviously a, a well-bred horse to stay. He's by shocking the Melbourne Cup winner. He finished just forward of midfield in the Knight Cup last start at Mooney Valley. Just probably needs to find three or four lengths. Dan O'Sullivan won the cup in 2008 with the mayor Lacey Underall. He saddles up the mayor here one last kiss. She's been racing basically in benchmark grade this preparation but did have a crack at the night cup last start and had absolutely no luck. About the 600 metre mark, I thought she was travelling quite well and had plenty to offer. 
got shuffled right out of the race. Prior to that, she won at Flemington over 2,500 metres. Throughout this preparation, she's found the line well. All of her form at a mile and a half or further is good. I think the best roughie. Sander Stan is another roughie you think has got a good chance. Going to go round at massive odds, Sander Stan, and he's been fantastic since coming to SA for Garrett Lynch. He's won five races in the last three months. Most recently beat Crimson Vine at Gawler. I know it's a Gawler benchmark race, but he carried a big weight there. He outfought Crimson Vine. She was impressive today. Prior to that, he got beaten four lengths in the Lord Reams and covered more ground than any other runner. He maps to get a soft run in front. He will be there for a long way. Oceanic Flash number 13, which has only been with Andrew Payne for four starts. Kira McAvoy rides for his brother-in-law and Karen's wife, Kathy, on track as well. She's flown in to see the horse run. Got plenty of connections there and a fair few guys in the ownership that, that we know well, so good luck to them. Oceanic Flash, she's been out of the winner's stall for about two years and every start in those two-year period has been at benchmark level. It's hard for me to come into the horse because this is the hardest task he's had for a long time. Honest enough, his last two. What about Rapineau, John, which ran fourth in the Lord Dreams? Thought she had every chance there and was uh, well enough held. There are a couple of other runners uh, such as Sanderstan that I thought had tougher runs than her that I'm happy to back instead of her. Danny O'Brien's won the Cup twice before. Demerger in 2005. King of Leogron's 2020. He saddles up Roaring Engine. Lightly raced horse who's starting to make his name as a stayer. He was good last start at Sandown after only narrowly getting beaten at Mooney Valley by Rapineau. We know that he'll stay. His mother was a Group 1 Oaks winner. She's got a half-sister who's a Group 1 Oaks winner. He's in the right yard. He's just coming out of form races that I think are inferior. The next two at similar odds, about 250 50 to 1. You probably don't have a price alongside of them, John. Number 16, 8 on the dot. I most definitely don't have a price against either of them. 8 on the dot's done a fantastic job for Scott Whittle this prep, but he's only the winner of one race out of 23. And Tulligan, the other bolter? He hasn't disgraced himself his last two at black type level, but he's had his chance at his finished midfield. He's going to need to find about five lengths. OK, let's get back to the two up the top. So a made third in the cup last year. The maid's now a 10-year-old and he's got to give five kilos basically to the rest of the field. He ran honestly here last year and uh, we're just hearing that the maid might have dumped the jockey on the way to the gates as well. So we'll wait and see if we can uh, find out further info there. Uh, a maid was good last start. He missed the start by a fair way, but he can do that quite regularly. He absolutely charged up the inside rail underneath 60 kilos. It was a good run, but again, where will he be in the, uh, in the run? I've got a feeling he won't have many behind him. And what about... Alhambra lad for Patrick Payne. Won the race as a jockey back in 1994. He's won it as a trainer as well already. Blink has come off Alhambra lad, which I don't think is a bad move to try to get him to stay and relax over this two miles. He's generally an honest horse. He's been mixing his form slightly in Tasmania, but again was honest behind acceleration. The problem is that acceleration beat him on his merits last start, and he's got to turn that couple of length defeat around at least to beat him. So, John, we'll recap your numbers, then we'll go to Nick for an update, and then JT's got Philip Stokes, and obviously there's no drama with a maid. I've gone with Acceleration to win, and he has been absolutely smashed. He's not far off pushing the map for favouritism now. He's been very well supported. The map can definitely win the race. She's a leading local chance. Where she gets to in the run and uh, the tempo being just moderate are my queries. But, gee, she's going well this prep. Yellow Brick Road, I've got no queries about where he'll be in the run. The map is very friendly for him. And a maid's very honest and will stay the trip. Suggest that, you know, despite his age, he's going as well as ever. He's ready to run a big race. Oh, he is. Well, the jockeys can't even stay on him. <laughs> you're, you're pretty happy, though, with him? Look, he's prepped up beautifully for this. Um, he, he was beautiful this morning. He's prayed a beautiful, so he's given me all the right signs. Mate, I'm sure the vet's going to run his eye over him quickly. We can see him heading around to the gates. Hopefully, he gets the, the tick of approval to line up. Thank you. Philip Stokes there, and we'll wander over and have a quick chat to uh, Dan Clark and trainer of the favour. A little bit of a stress, uh, uh, less stressful five minutes for you than Philip Stokes. His one got loose and, uh, and and headed away, but thankfully they've caught him. Your girl, she's on her best behaviour. Have they caught her? They, they've caught a maid, yeah. Oh, bad luck. 
<laughs> no, she's, she's, she's presented beautifully. She looks sensational. She's nice and relaxed. Jamie got on, she pricked her ears and off she went. So, no, we're, we're thrilled. It seems as though, and you've probably been asked this question a couple of times this week, it seems as though everything has gone perfectly to plan this campaign with her. Yeah, well, you like things too. If you've, you've set a plan and and they have gone to, everything's gone to perfection so far. So, um, you know, Jay Carr on board, it all adds up. Hopefully, you know, we can do the right thing and win a cup. She's drawn well. I'm tipping you didn't really give her too many instructions, but where would you like to see her? Is it is it midfield? Does she get further back? Or, you know, does she hold a spot from, from that draw? Jay Carr's got a plan. <laughs> I didn't ask her too much. She said, I want to be in front more than what's behind me, so she'll work it out. You know, you don't say and ask her, she'll just do. And, mate, the ride with this horse, I think there are about 80 owners or more than 80 up in the function. There's about 80 here in the, the mounting yard. They've come from all over Sydney, half of Keats here. It's um, It's been an incredible story. It's been a great story, you know. Um, it's great for racing. It's great for SA. It's good to see that, you know, all these guys, they're just going to get the biggest thrill if this horse can, uh, you know, come home with the chocolate. So, you know, we're looking forward to it. Go find Obi. Go find your lucky spot, mate. Good luck. Thanks, JT. Dan Clark in there with JT. So, a maid, we've seen the horse behind the gates, John, and obviously the vets had a look at him. Uh, Zach Spain, not yet in the saddle, but he couldn't have gone far. He must have basically gone to the, the end of the 1,200-metre shoot. They basically yeah. start down by about the 900-metre mark. That's probably a good thing. He's corralled himself into that shoot or maybe with the help of some of the uh, the staff behind the gates. Uh, he looked pretty relaxed behind the gates, and watching a few of these other horses walk around behind the gates, most of these stayers are handling the heat pretty well. You can just see the vet there on left of screen just alongside Zach Spain. He was on the two-way, so there must be some information coming through shortly. Yeah, we can see that uh, yeah, they are working on a maid there. The uh, clerk of the course is just standing next to him. We'll wait and see if we hear any more about a maid. From what we would understand, he wouldn't have gone too far without the rider. So significant move for acceleration, John, here. The horse you've put on top and the second selection, and it's a great crowd, as you would expect, for Cup Day here today. It's been really pleasing to see the crowd turn up. We know we've had warm weather over the last few days, but today is a little more moderate with temperatures around the mid-30s as opposed to where we were on Saturday, say. And, uh, yeah, that move for acceleration, he's now sub $5. That's coincided with a market drift with the map. She was backed into as short as $2.50 a couple of days ago. She's going to run somewhere closer to $3.80, $4 by the looks. Just heard Brett on the PA. Our maid has been cleared to run, John, so that is good. That's very good news for the Stokes Stable and connections with a maid. He's been a fantastic horse since coming to Australia, a really consistent horse, and obviously that highlight, the Bendigo Cup last year. Okay, so Philip Stokes, he's won two of the last three cups with Good Idea and then Dash on Sweet Junior, which was written by... Jamie Carr. Let's see if he can win a third in four years with a mate who is going to try and do what no other 10-year-old has ever done, John, and win the Adelaide Cup. It'd be a fantastic story for him. Uh, he's a Ideally, you'd say, well, he's six months younger, but he'd still be a 10-year-old uh, based on Northern Hemisphere breeding as well. It'd be a fantastic effort for the Stokes Yard. We know that he's had a couple of issues during his career, but they've been able to manage him through that. On his last run in the night cup at Mooney Valley, they've got him going as well as he ever has. So we're nearly two minutes past start time as we go to our caller, Brett Davis. All the money late has come for acceleration. However, the map is still favourite. Number four, 270 out to 370. Acceleration, five dollars into 440. Yellow Brick Road, the Lord Reams winner. Number seven, seven dollars into 550 late, and a maid is eight dollars and solid. Ten dollars then for Grand Piero, eleven dollars for a Lambra lad. 20s or greater, the best, headed by one last kiss, who's actually firmed up from 23 into $19 in the last couple of minutes. So they're just adjusting the saddle on a maid. Some of the horses have already loaded in. Rapino standing quietly. Here's one last kiss coming forward. Primarily owned here in South Australia. One last kiss, Luke Curry takes the ride today. Had excuses last start. Prior to that form has been extremely Strong and honest. Here's Roaring Engine moving in for Kayla Crowther. Coming in now is Lincoln King alongside. So the field is taking shape. 
for the running of the Tab Adelaide Cup. First run back in 1864, won by a horse called Falcon. 2024, who writes their name in history? We'll soon know, Sander Stand to come in. Tulligan as well, Oceanic Flash. Acceleration, Port Guillaume for the Hayes Camp. And the maid is still standing there, swishing the tail a little bit, but Zach Spain jumps back aboard. So almost ready to go. Tab Adelaide Cup to be run in high temperatures. Most of the horses today have been very well behaved and cope very well with the heat. Air Assault, probably the odd sock out in that respect earlier on, but he went on to win the Morfordville Guineas. Now here comes the Lord Reams winner, Yellow Brick Road. So acceleration and a maid to complete the line. 2024 Tab Adelaide Cup, favourite is the map. Stand by. All in, bar two. Two scallywags still to move in. One of them is a maid. And the other one, eight on the dot. So, it's come to this moment. It's been a massive build-up throughout the week. Plenty of nerves. They're over. The light is on. Set. Tab Adelaide Cup ready. Stand by. Starter is scanning the field. He's happy. And they're off. And a maid. Well, he missed it. Probably four, maybe five. So he's not the best away. But we know that was probably going to be the case. One last kiss. And also acceleration gets snagged out. There's plenty of speed on up front. Yellow Brick Road, Oceanic Flash, Alambra Lads carving over. So too is Grand Piero, Rapino not far away. Sander Stan caught out a fraction deep at the moment. Then Skelm. The map seemed to jump quite well. She's actually just in behind the main division as they turn into the straight and then eight on the dot. So they're in the home straight now and it's Oceanic Flash being joined by Alambra Lad. Alambra Lad rolls up now to take the lead from Oceanic Flash and Sander Stan is going to park between the pair as they come down with a circuit to run. Yellow Brick Road's getting a lovely trail now, running fifth on the outside of Skilm. Two to Grand Piero and then a length away to the map. Rapino and eight on the dot, three deep. One last kiss was able to sneak through inside of the map there when she left the fence and has pinched ground. A maid is towards the back of the field and there looks to be some problem here for the jockey. There is Zach Spain. He's lost his irons. So uh, we've got a problem here with uh, a maid. Zach Spain has got no irons and he's just sitting in the field. It's like he was back in 1864. Then Tulligan, followed by Acceleration, towards the back is Roaring Engine in company with Lincoln King. Lincoln King ahead of Roaring Engine and Port Guillaume is fourth last. So there's some issues for a maid. That's the first thing we've established. The second thing we've established is that Alambra Lad at the mile has the lead. By a length to Sanderstan. Third position, Oceanic Flash. Yellow Brick Road is fourth. Skelm is fifth. Then Grand Piero, eight on the dot. The map is one off on the outside. She's almost obscured by the lime colours of one last kiss. Then a maid in the white cap with Zach Spain bobbing in the saddle. Rapino and then Tulligan. Port Guillaume, acceleration. And towards the back of the last two, Lincoln King and Roaring Engine. Heading to the side of the track, they've gone in halfway, a thousand to run. And the leader, Alambra Lad, by three quarters. Sander Stan ready to strike. Yellow Brick Road has moved to third. Oceanic Flash, then eight on the dot. Skelm, followed by Grand Piero. Now the map, Jamie Carr's just holding her cards at the moment. She's yet to peel, but she's going to come deep. 
One last kiss, then Port Guillaume. A maid still going along, but he's in all sorts of trouble here. Then acceleration sneaking through as they race up towards the 600 where Sanderstan gets in the face now of a Lambra lad. Yellow Brick Road, eight on the dot, Skelm. Here's the map joining in at the right time. A maid's come off the fence. This would be remarkable if he's in the finish. They sweep up to the home bend. Sanderstan turned in front with a Lambra lad. The map quickly joins them. Acceleration's charged through on the rail. Then a maid. The map goes to the lead at the 250. Acceleration's hunting her down. Acceleration after the map. Then a maid and Skilm. Acceleration drives through underneath the map. Acceleration on the map. A grandstand finish to the Adelaide Cup. Or maybe Acceleration. A whisker to the map, but there's nothing in it. Acceleration or the map. Third place Skelm. What a remarkable run by a maid to finish fourth. Roaring Engine was next across the line. Then one last kiss. Yellow Brick Road, Alhambra Lad. Next in Tulligan, Rapino, Port Guillaume. Roaring Engine, Sanderstan, eight on the dot and Oceanic Flash. It's a photo and acceleration wins. What a race, what a finish and what a ride. Harry Coffey and Jamie Carr pair off to fight out. Stride for stride the last furlong, John. The map, the outside, acceleration, the inside. And the inside, the Victorian just sticks his neck out and wins by the barest of margins. Two great rides and what a great battle over the last 100 metres. Harry Coffey, that is one of the rides of the year. Acceleration was bolting from the 800 metre mark. He kept picking runs inside horses. He hasn't gone round a horse. He's won the race by about half a head. The maps had every chance for Jamie Carr. She always had it in the right spot. She probably had a length or two on acceleration at the 200 metre mark. And what a run from a maid. The horse has finished fourth. Zach Spade has had no irons for basically 2,400 metres. And he loomed up like he was going to run past them to at the 400 John did a maid that was an incredible piece of horsemanship from Zach Spain we'll catch up with him but how about the training performance from Richard Cully here with acceleration wins a great Western Cup two starts ago goes to Tassie bolts in the Launceston Cup steps to two miles for the first time today got right back looked in a really tricky position at about the 600 metre mark but he was a strong stayer he pinched gaps when Harry needed him to take them he and did. he's finished hard Harry Coffey not only was a brilliant ride, but he knew his horse. He knew his horse had a short, sharp sprint, and he had to ride the horse to save ground and ride him for luck. He used his sprint at exactly the right time, and it's been the difference between winning and losing. What a great training performance, as you say, by Richard Cully. Last start at Launceston, that's the first time the horse had been past 2,000 metres. There will be a massive thrill for him, and uh, he now has a group two to his name. Terry, you've got an emotional crew down there. Yeah. I said to Harry after Launceston, I said, would your missus mind if I gave you a kiss? And he says, as long as you, you strap her, does it, she won't care. <laughs> Now, is it going to be a nice, quiet night in Adelaide for you two boys? <laughs> Don't think so. No, no, not, no way. No way. This is a dream come true. In fact, it's a dream that keeps on going. I hope I never, ever wake up. <laughs> well, he may well run in the most famous two-mile race in Australia come November. Well, that's the dream. We're still dreaming. <laughs> unreal. Unreal. Really good. R wrapped. Wrapped in Richie, as Grant said. Richie, the whole, all the staff, all the way through been so good, you know, and put up with a lot with this fella. We call him Elvis for, for obvious reasons. Ray, tell me something. How did you get involved? How much did the horse cost? Emma Scott, a girl from Bell Reynolds, she was training at the time, and I agreed to buy some horses, and she went over to Adelaide, and she rung me out of the blue. None of the ones we'd picked out, and she says, I've got a nice horse, Ray, do you want to go in? And that was it. She cost her $6,000. So $6,000 from the Magic Million sales here in Adelaide? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, unreal. What a ride you're having. Oh, mate, it's unbelievable. This is unbelievable. I'm just thankful. I'm so thankful to everyone. All the boys have put in. You know, we've, we've, we've had a lot. We've done this together. To all the boys in Melbourne, I miss you all, but we're having a good day. Hey, Harry, come back this way, buddy. You want to weigh in and come back. Okay, boys, just take it back. Harry Coffey's going to go and jump on the scales, and then he'll be back with us. He might want to get a drink. Incredible scenes. A $6,000 oh. horse, John. They've living the dream. He, as I said, won the Great Western Cup earlier in the campaign. He went to Launceston. Richie Kelly wasn't actually trackside for Launceston either. I think he had some bushfire concerns around his property around Burrow.
Warren beat there, so he was back there safeguarding that. Not sure what's prevented him from uh, from experiencing the, the best day of, of his training career. Obviously a champion jumps jockey in yeah. his riding career, but geez, uh, he's got a nice horse here. What a, what a great horse he's been for Richard Cully. He's always been a dynamic horse, and uh, now we're just seeing the absolute best of him uh, when he stepped over these staying trips. He had to settle early, and Harry, Harry Coffey had a plan right from the first bounce out of the gates. He knew he was just going to snag him back, put him behind horses, and make sure that he had horses around him and outside him to really switch off. And to uh, Acceleration's credit, he did just that and, and, and uh, was able to conserve that final sprint by not overdoing it early. Some great stories behind the first two. Skelm, after the tendon injury and nearly two years off, has come back and run third in the race that he contested and tried two years ago. And a maid, I'm sure people will watch that replay and shake their head and say, how did he come forth with no irons for basically most of the race? A maid's stay at the races has been a very, very eventful day. It hasn't been as joyful as what Harry Coffey's is. Terry, it's always a a happy trip to Morfittville when Harry Coffey makes the trip across the border. He won his first ever Group 1 race here, and he's back to win the Adelaide Cup. He certainly did win his first Group 1 here. He won it on Suppressor. I was lucky enough to call that race for you that day. Harry, you just said that both Ray and Grant, you know they love the limelight and the microphone, so you didn't want to steal any of their thunder. Yeah, when we were at Launceston the other day, I nearly missed me riding the next race in the presentations. <laughs> they were talking about how it walked out as a foal at the yearling sales here six years ago, so I thought I'll go away in and come back out. There's plenty of time. That was only your first ride on the horse. How did that all come about for you? Um, they were keen to give me a go, the owners and Richie, and just being down in the weights and my ability to ride light um, at the drop of a hat and also my um, success that I've had in Tasmania, I think they sort of gave me a go. And, um, yeah, luckily enough, I went down. It was sort of a no-brainer. He's got great form. He's a classy horse, and Richie's a brilliant trainer. He knows what he's doing. So we were a little bit unsure whether we we're going to come to Adelaide just with the two weeks between runs, but... As you've seen, it was the right idea. Harry, you were a long way back and back on the inside of runners cluttered away. And were you happy? Were you OK there? Um, I just had to cop me medicine and I actually had him really well relaxed for the type of horse that he is. And then Zach's iron broke and I was like, wow, wee, what am I going to do now? Because I didn't know what Zach was going to do. And to Zach's credit, he tried to ride a race without any irons. And mind you, he gave it a good steer because I was following him. So um, I was able to sneak through and I was in two minds. I, I really rated um, the Dan O'Sullivan horse with Luke Curry on it. I've ridden her a fair bit and this was a target race for her. So I followed her for a, lot, for a long way and Richie wanted me to cut the corner. And I had in my mind I would have loved to have got on Jamie's back at some stage, but Richie was really keen to cut the corner and it worked. We cut the corner all right and we shot straight up the inside. OK. And uh, when do you head home, mate? I'm uh, going to ride one and then me and Yendel are flying back to Horsham in a little uh, plane. I tell you what, that ride there just then was a lot more enjoyable than the ride over, so hopefully we're going all right on the way home. If you're thinking you're going home straight away, you better avoid Ray and Grant because I think they've got big plans. They look like they could uh, drink to the yearling sales next week and then buy too many yearlings, don't they? So uh, I'll be getting out of here. Good on you, mate. Well done. Thanks. Thanks heaps. There we go. Harry Coffey. Yeah, incredible... Uh one of the most uh, loved jockeys in the Australian riding ranks for many different reasons. One is that he's a quality rider, a multiple group one winner. Two, he's a quality human being, John, so nobody begrudges a result like this. Uh, Harry's one of the most loved figures in uh, Victorian racing. We often see him in SA. He's been a, a fantastic uh, figure for for people with cystic fibrosis and to see the challenges he's faced in his life and to again rise to the top of the tree, absolutely unbelievable. We'll park it here at Morfordville for now, an action-packed but thrilling edition of the 2024 Adelaide Cup. We'll have all the wash-ups, speak to some of the beaten connections. Right now, though, let's head back to Ballarat for the last.